when I'm not converting my entire Instagram over to my new passion, squirrel-only photography. Oh yes, you delightful little critters. My very best friends. I like to answer questions that get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Since you asked, what is the breakdown on building triads? As far as the jerk goes, very funny when he was trying to learn rhythm, I enjoy your wit. Peace. This is kind of referencing me talking about being compared to Steve Martin, but only Steve Martin in The Jerk last week, which I'm still a little salty about. But why not make this a great excuse to just talk about triads? Triads are probably one thing that I just didn't really understand fully until embarrassingly late. So we're just going to do some quick tips and tricks on how to incorporate triads into your playing, what they even are. Basically, it's a three-note chord, right? Uh, insert some stupid joke about some kind of gang thing. But uh, yeah, three note chord, that's it. We're gonna focus on major triads, how to build them. All right, so we'll start with the C. Third fret on the A string, okay? One really great way to do it, and we're gonna make a little lick out of this, is gonna sound like this. Okay, two triads, back to back. Now, when I say building a triad, basically we start with the note, C. We're gonna use the C major scale to build the rest of this chord, okay? So usually chords are built in thirds. So we take a note, we find three notes away in the major scale from that. That brings us to the next note, which is an E, and then three notes away from that, which is a G. C, skip the D, grab an E, skip the F, grab a G. C, E, G, okay? Now we can combine those in one chord, doesn't matter how many of each one we have, it's still a triad, even if we're playing five or six strings, still a triad. Now, let's do this in a single note way that kind of makes a little bit more sense tying them together, okay? So now since we built that triad in thirds through the major scale, we can connect that with a little bit of a pattern into another triad because again these are just chords all chords are the building block of pretty much any type of music you're ever going to find right so being able to play chords and triads in different ways is super super important so we're going to take that c e g which you've already played before as just a regular c major chord but we're going to do it like this okay make it a bare minimum of musicality right just like your typical brown-tailed squirrel you're not going to find anything better or worse. It's just, it is what it is. Three, three. The squirrel. The squirrel thing is too much. You know that I'm deep, deep in pandemic when I'm like only taking pictures of squirrels. Three. We've got this C on the A string. I'm going to play it three times, all right, for the triad. C, C, C. I'm going to slide into the E note, but I'm gonna grab it on the seventh fret of the A string instead of grabbing it on the second fret of the D string, right? I think that's sliding from five to seven is a more musical way to play a C to its next third in its chord. And then we're gonna grab the G on the fifth fret of the D string, okay? So we have, and then, now, after I get to the G from that C triad, I'm gonna take my pinky on the eighth fret of the A string, which is an F note. I'm gonna play that twice, and my fingers are already in position for the next triad. Seven D, which is an A, and then five G, which is a C. Now, if we just look at that, F, A, C, that would be the first, third, and fifth note of the F major scale giving us an F major triad. So we have the one chord to the four chord in the key of C. Kind of revolving through two triads to get back to the home base, all right? So you can always do that if you know what key you're in. You can be in the key of D. And then whatever the chords are, you know that first triad is gonna connect through this little arpeggio run triad chord building lick that we've just made. Doesn't matter, you don't even need to know the other chords in there, you just know that these triads will always connect. If we're in B flat, the official key of the year. Kind of flubbed that one, but that's fine. There we go, right? That's just the one chord to the four chord. So I think just, aside from being able to build these, I think knowing the distances between them is also super important. 
Let's go to uh, kind of like the other end of the spectrum string wise and just play a regular D major triad, okay? Rocking out the Taylor 614, by the way, in case anybody asks. Uh, just regular D chord, right? You may already know the other major chords in the key of D, which would be a G major and an A major. D, G, A. We hear it all the time, right? But if you think of this as just being the same shape to get those three notes from the D major scale, again, we could find out what they are. Here's the D major scale. If you don't know how to make a major scale, go to my Patreon, check that out. But we've got a D, skip the E, F sharp, skip the G, and get an A. D, F sharp, A is combined in this chord. We can always think of the next major triad in this key as just being, uh, all right, you know, you have a note, whole, whole, half, five frets up. So the root note actually is the third fret in this shape right here. So it's three plus five is eight. We can just take this, run it up to the eighth fret, and that's gonna be the next major triad in this key, and then two frets from there is gonna be the next major triad. So we could call that the one chord, the four chord, the five chord. It's a very easy way to get there. Just think of wherever you are to start with, add five frets higher, as long as it's you know a closed voice shape like this, which means we're not having the open strings help us out really. Add five and add two. And then, all right, well, that's an interval. That's a spacing that I now have that I can combine with maybe doing that. That first thing that we did on a D note. And then I kind of start making these connections. And then eventually you can fluidly combine them. And then you're just, you got all the acorns in the world. And you're just having a good old time up in the trees. No worries. Is your hair a separate living being? After the cameras are off, it crawls away and your baldness shines. Or is it extra awesome hair? I think the former. It blows my mind how many people think this is a wig. I get a lot of comments on YouTube being like, bro, why are you wearing a wig? <laughs> Just embrace it. <laughs> Have you ever seen any wigs for sale that look like this? I, I guess I've never actually been in a wig shop, so maybe I'm the idiot here. But uh, that's one of my most entertaining comments that I regularly get now, apparently. Good luck with the contest. I hope you get some good entries. So this is on the contest where we were calling for like cover songs and fan art and fan fiction, which we got some amazing entries. I am so stoked to share a lot of these with you. I'm just waiting for Davidas to come over later this week and we're gonna kind of go through them. So we should have a video coming uh, by this weekend at the latest, hopefully. And uh, yeah, thank you to everybody who entered. Now, if you wanna get in on another great contest, uh, the people who sent me that Camden EC1 interface I did a demo on are giving away a few units. So I'm gonna link you to that too because you know it's worth a shot. You can get an awesome $600 interface. I'll also link the video that we did on that in the description because the thing sounds awesome and it has a lot of different utilities. And uh, yeah, check that out because you could win a free, uh, super awesome interface and maybe you'll win that guitar if you entered the contest. Excited to hear Emerald Riders too. How much longer do we have to wait? The real reason you guys are tuned in to find out when the next Emerald Riders album is coming out. It's gonna drop on St. Patrick's Day this year. Was there ever any other doubt? 100%. Eh? It hasn't really actually been finished yet, but I'm I'm just now making myself finish it by St. Patrick's Day. It's gonna be pretty lit, and I might actually start doing some, uh, maybe releasing some singles out on the channel in the meantime. But uh, I think it sounded pretty good, so stay tuned. I like that he's still doing these intro jokes. Never change, Sean. I never will. The intro jokes are easily the hardest part about this entire operation is the pressure on doing some kind of intro joke that if you guys don't find funny, that means I found it funny, <laughs> okay? And usually the worse the intro joke is as far as like what you people might think is funny, probably the funnier that I think it is. So I'll just kind of keep doing it and uh, keep shooting my beloved squirrels. Hold ears in pain. What a damn bomb. I'm lucky I can even tap while you put me to sleep with your off key wailing. How much of a psychopath must you be to be lulled to sleep by wailing? <laughs> it's either one or the other, man. It's either boring to you and you don't like the song so you're falling asleep, or it's just so terrible it's hurting your ears. But if it's causing you pain and also relaxing you into a state of sleep at the same time, I have like serious concerns for you. <laughs> For listening homework this week, I gotta throw you to the new Julian Baker track. She's so good, I think her, her songwriting is top notch. And uh, it's just such a vibe, so super, super huge fan of hers. 
definitely check that out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. Or if you'd like to contact me to buy some squirrel prints, please, I'm available, so hit me up.